Hi, I'm Wal Galbraith. I'm a part of the Ray White South Coast Group, and this is your South Coast Snapshot for Week 40, 2022. The snapshot's designed to give you a bite-sized breakdown of the real estate market overall, including local, regional, and city-based information across Australia. All information is sourced from the AFR, leading economists on Twitter, and the Sydney Morning Herald. All information is relevant to current buyers, property owners, and investors. Well, it seems Australia's pandemic-fueled renovation boom has run its course, with economists tipping high interest rates, falling property prices, and fewer sales, which will weigh on growth and cause a blowout in the stretched state government budgets. After surging 25% over the past two years, the Bunnings boom is over with alterations and additions activity, a proxy for home renovations being in decline, falling by 1.6% in the June quarter national accounts. IFM Investors Chief Economist Alex Joyner said renovation spending was set to fall further thanks to soaring costs and the end of government subsidies. The prospect of the Reserve Bank delivering a cash rate cut as early as next year is extremely low, according to ANZ, which estimates the probability of a large negative shock to the Australian economy being equally as low. I struggle with the view that the RBA will be in a position to ease with unemployment in the low threes and wage growth accelerating above 3.5%, said David Plank, head of Australian economics at ANZ. ANZ forecasts the economy to slow, but it will take a long time before any meaningful rise in the unemployment rate eventuates. The residential vacancy rate dropped to 0.9% nationwide in August, its lowest level in more than 16 years, as rental supply dwindled amid soaring demand, data from SQM Research shows. Lewis Christopher, SQM Research Managing Director, said the widespread decline in available rental homes would be likely to push rents higher in the coming months as fewer properties were listed for lease. House values in more than 60% of Sydney suburbs have at least doubled over the past decade. Overall house values are up by 107% over the past decade. Unit values by comparison lifted by 62%. Australian Super Head of Property, Bevan Towning, has called on federal and state governments to step up their support if they wanted super funds to invest in affordable housing because returns on offer as low as 2.5% did not stack up. Super funds are pushing for greater tax concessions that will allow them to expand commercial build-to-rent housing, currently a premium product, into a more mass market offering. New housing demand will pick up in the next 18 to 24 months as, raise, as rising wages and falling prices combine to improve the affordability problem, keeping buyers out of the market, says Stockland Chief Executive Taran Gupta. Almost 2.2 million Australians are millionaires after soaring asset prices pushed another 390,000 adults onto the top rungs of the global wealth ladder, according to a report by Credit Suisse that says Australians are now the richest people in the world. The figure probably marks a near-term peak for Australia as falling property prices are poised to drag on Australians' paper wealth this year. The median Australian adult finished 2021 with a net worth of $273,900 US dollars, making them richer than the comparable resident of any other country, according to Credit Suisse's annual Global Wealth Report. Volumes of the country's largest 100 home builders dropped 15% over the year to June as materials and labour shortages hammered the residential construction sector, even as it tried to digest unprecedented levels of new demand. The 100 largest producers chalked up a collective 74,973 housing starts last year, down from 88,215 a year earlier. Shortages of materials are curbing the sector's ability to produce new homes and meet the record demand stimulated by the recent potent mix of record low borrowing costs and generous government stimulus payments. Nearly one in five landlords nationwide are planning to sell at least one of their properties in the year ahead, with many of those doing so to avoid Queensland's new land tax law that will come into effect next June, a survey has found. If investors follow through, this could potentially deplete rental supply by 200,000 properties around the country at a time when vacancy rates are already below 1%. But investor exodus has already started and more than one in six landlords have already offloaded one or more of their properties in the past 12 to 24 months. Of those who have sold, 45.1% have disposed of at least one of their investment properties in Queensland, potentially wiping out 162,000 rental properties in the state or slashing 30% of the available rental homes in just two years. 
And finally, the average mortgage rate has risen from 2.86% in April to 3.99%, an increase of 40% overall. Looking locally, there are still great signs of buyer activity on the south coast coming into the warmer months, which is typically a stronger time for our sales and listings inside of our coastal markets. Vendors are becoming far more open to the feedback from the marketplace, and as buyers are racing to beat their pre-assessment timeframes, they are eager to make purchases happen promptly. Want to make the best use of the current market? If you're either expanding your property portfolio or looking to sell your current property, get in touch today, we'd love to help. I'm Will Galbraith with the Ray White South Coast Group and this has been your South Coast Snapshot for Week 40, 2022. Be well.